The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. It was very early on the first day of the week and still dark when Mary of Magdala came to the tomb. She saw that the stone had been moved away from the tomb and came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved. They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, she said, and we don't know where they have put him. Meanwhile, Mary stayed outside near the tomb, weeping. Then still weeping, she stooped to look inside and saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said, Woman, why are you weeping? They have taken my Lord away, she replied, and I, do not, and I do not know where they have put him. As she said this, she turned round and saw Jesus standing there, though she did not recognize him. Jesus said, Woman, why are you weeping? Who are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said, Sir, if you have taken him away, Tell me where you have put him, and I will go and remove him. Jesus said, Mary. She knew him then and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means master. Jesus said to her, Do not cling to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go and find the brothers and tell them, I'm, I'm ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. So Mary of Magdala went and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord and that he had said these things to her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In a house where I went visiting, a little child, around maybe seven or eight years old, was playing with her little teddy bear. And anyone who tried to take away the teddy bear, she'd give out a big scream. And so, me and my, maybe my foolishness, but I, I kind of told her, you know, what will happen when maybe you become big and you... You have a boyfriend or you have your, your husband and they don't like the teddy bear. And her response was, I'll tell them to get lost. <laughs> well, um, all the best to her boyfriend or her, or her husband in the future. But, but it was just that reaction. This, this is not strange. You see this in children very often. They can get very attached to something and then anyone else who is there around it that could be a hindrance to them holding on to what they like, they will cut them off. In today's gospel passage, there's this beautiful moment when we read of, of Mary of Magdalene, Mary of Magdala responding, when she's weeping and crying, not having found Jesus, and they ask her, why are you crying? The angels ask her, why are you crying? And she says, they have taken away my Lord. They have taken away my Lord. Very often in history, um, in, in Christian history, especially in medieval Christian history, uh, Western Christian history, they've confused Mary of Magdalene with Mary of Bethany and the woman who was caught in adultery, the one who washed the feet of Jesus. So apparently there are three different people. Mary of Bethany is supposed to be Mary of Bethany. The Eastern Church still looks at Mary of Bethany as a different person than Mary of Magdalene. And we famously uh, speak about um, Mary Magdalene being the one who came and washed the feet of Jesus. She was the one who had the, the sensual life that she lived. Apparently, that isn't Mary of Magdalene. Mary of Magdala is the one from whom the seven demons, and that's the only surety that the, that the Gospels give us about Mary of Magdalene. 
That's in Luke chapter 8, verse Luke chapter 8, verse 2. The twelve were with him, as well as some women who had been cured of evil spirits and infirmities. Mary called Magdalene, from whom seven demons had gone out. So that, that was pretty much the only thing we realize about, or we know about Mary of Magdalene, about what her past life was, that she had seven demons. What those seven demons were is open to interpretation. But what's more interesting is how she's grown into this love for Jesus. The love with which she would say, they have taken my Lord away from me and she's weeping. They've taken my Lord away from me with tears in our eyes. That's the passion and love that we see. Often in, uh, in popular literature, they... they they kind of find this difficult to understand. And so they've interpreted it as the love relationship between Jesus and Mary of Magdalene. Um, a, very, a very worldly love relationship between Jesus and Mary of Mag Magdala. And that's because they wouldn't have understood the depth with which one is supposed to love Jesus. The passion with which one is supposed to love Jesus. They have taken my Lord away. So I weep. It's something that we as disciples need to actually ask ourselves. Do we have this same passion? Do I weep when someone or something has taken my Lord away from me? There's so many things in, in this world that can take Jesus away from us. There's so many people in this world that can take Jesus away from us. Do we weep when my Lord is taken away from me? Am I so bothered and so troubled in my heart? I cannot be so bothered and troubled in my heart unless and until I am, in pas I am passionately in love with him. If I'm not passionately in love with him, no one's going to understand this. No one can understand what Mary is going through and therefore... When, when people don't understand what Mary is going through, they've already attributed it to a worldly relationship, um, a, a kind of man and woman relationship between Jesus and Mary. Look at the attribution. That's because they haven't understood what this relationship is, what this love is. And this is the kind of love that can happen only with someone who has genuinely experienced a conversion of the heart. Not just because I'm a cradle Catholic. It doesn't happen that way. It's only if I've genuinely experienced a conversion of the heart. And that is why it's important to understand Mary of Magdala from whom the demons were taken out. She has experienced a conversion. Jesus has touched the core of her heart. From there comes this love. And that is why what has taken my Lord away from me? Tell me, and I will put that aside because I want my Lord. It's, it's interesting because that is precisely what Jesus speaks about in discipleship in, in Matthew chapter 10, verse 37. Matthew 10, 10, 37. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. Whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Whoever loves any relationship that keeps me away from them is not worthy of me. To be able to love Jesus to the extent that if there's any relationships that keeps me away from my Lord, then I need to question that relationship. If there's anything in this world that keeps me away from my Lord, then I need to question that thing. If my career keeps me away from my Lord, I need to question my attitude towards my career. If my pleasure and my sins, my sins obviously will, or my pleasure, my sin, or the things of the world keep me away from my Lord, I need to relook into what 
I am finding passion and love for in this world. No wonder Jesus asks Peter in John chapter 21, verse, John chapter 21, verse 15, I think. Verse 15, Jesus said to Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Interpret that these into everything else. Do you love me more than your father? Do you love me more than your mother? Do you love me more than your spouse? Do you love me more than your career? Do you love me more than anything else in this world? Peter, do you love me more than these? And then look at Matthew 10, verse 37. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. Whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And then look at Mary of Magdala. Someone who wept and cried and said, they have taken my Lord away from me and give him back. That is what she says. Tell me where he is and I'll go and find him and I'll take him back. Just give him back to me. I think today it's a beautiful day for us to actually look into our hearts and see, has someone something taken my Lord away from me? Then I need to pray and say, give him back to me. I want my Jesus back. The same way in the way I lost him, I want him back. In Philippians chapter 3, verse 8, it says, More than that, I regard everything as loss because of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For this sake, I've suffered the loss of all things and I regard them as rubbish in order that I may gain Christ. I will give up everything, just give him back to me. And that should be a prayer that we make all the time. If I've lost my Lord, if I can't find him, let me weep and cry and say, give him back to me. Because ultimately, that is all that we have. We have our creator. And if we don't have our creator, we don't have anything left. So let's pray for this gift that through the intercession of Mary Magdalene, we might also be able to make that prayer she made. If you have taken him, please give him back. Just tell me where he is and I'll go and find him and take him back. Let's close our eyes for a moment. Lord Jesus, we thank you for having offered yourself to us. Every day in the Eucharist, you offer yourself to us. But if at all, Lord, the things of the world and the passion of the world or my ego, my pride or my desire for worldly gifts and my career and my pleasure has taken has taken you away from me I pray Lord I want you back if like the prodigal I've moved away from home Like the prodigal, I want to come back. If I have anything, Lord, it is only you. I want you again, Jesus, I pray. Amen.